a lot of Chinese down to there to overcome the dust. And they established another one at Kojarina, which is on the Mullaw Jordan Road, about uh, oh, about a mile past uh, Kojarina Railway Station. And uh, so, uh, the link trainer, I don't know whether anybody's spiritual link trainer. <laughs> Some people like, didn't get along too well with that, but others seem to improve pretty well. And that's the uh, Abra uh, Ardo aircraft. That's supposed to be off the Cormoran. Uh, that was, um, they, they found us uh, in night flying one, one evening around the airfield. Uh, was joined by a float plane and uh, they had to try and identify, but they couldn't get close enough to it because it was a bit faster than they ever had. Yeah. Uh, in, in November, the HMO Sydney was sunk. Uh, they started doing searches by, with the uh, Hudson and the Avros. Uh, they confined the Avros and up along the coast, right up as far as Oslo. Um, and in the 26th of November, the uh, cattle leaders arrived. They came from, one from uh, Rockhampton and the other one from um, Port Moresby. They both ended up at various times at Darwin and flew down, continuously flying all the way from Rockhampton down to Darwin, down to Fremantle, one from Port Moresby to Darwin and down to Fremantle, or down to Perth. And they flew back to Jordan the next day. Uh, they had to refuel and we walked down from the school to have a look at the uh, Catalina and uh, we were told that they had to pump <coughs> 35, 44 gallon drums of fuel into that by hand, semi-rotary pump. I think these Catalina fellows had pretty strong arms. Uh, that's a parade, uh, uh, a graduation parade. Air yeah, Corporal de La Rue, yeah, he was uh, presenting the rings. Eight, nine horse D flight wing. The other aircraft is the Anson that uh, was, they were involved in some uh, formation flying and the other one that wanted to change over got a bit close, took the top of it <laughs> and the, a part of the propeller blade ended up in the seat behind the pilot, just at the back of his head. It was really lucky. The uh, football teams, uh, we used to go down and watch them play on the recreation ground. Uh, a lot of league players amongst them and uh, consequently it was Pretty high standard of football. The tall fellow in the middle there, Donald Anderson. Remember the DCA chief? Uh, he he trained at Jordan, and that's the Blues football team below. Some of the football teams were pretty good. Uh, uh, league players, um, Corp Riley, and uh, uh, Len Gardner, and a few of the other fellows that were pretty good. And, one of the problems they had with Paddy Hepburn had was a lot of um, uh, blokes testing the boundaries of how low they could fly and doing all sorts of funny things. As a matter of fact, one chap here who, uh, when he left school, was a barber, a fitness barber in Jordan at the time. We used to get from school and go down to the barber shop to have a haircut. But he ended up joining the Air Force. And in one of his cross country exercises, he must have been flying a bit lately because he came back with a gum tree branch in the aircraft on the wing. Instead of landing out the outfield somewhere else, he brought it back with the evidence and consequently he was fined a couple of weeks wages and uh, confined to barracks. Uh, the recreation hall was quite a quite a, a popular place. Had a lot of talented people. Um, when you look at the, uh, the people who went through the brace, artists and you name it, they had it. Uh, they had te uh, good facilities at the airfield with uh, tennis courts. The WAFs arrived in uh, uh, March 42. They uh, were there when the uh, evacuees from Dutch East Indies started coming through. A lot of the uh, women had uh, babies, uh, no facilities at all, no nappies. The, um, the WAFs uh, scrammed around and pinched all the tea towels uh, and they were, they were sent on with the, with the mothers. Uh, they got a message back from the headquarters to say well, what, why is all the tea towels going and when they explained the situation it was forgotten all about. You can't beat the women from being innovative.
Some of the WAFs were trained as uh, mechanics and that they're overhauling a, uh, a Manson there. And the, um, the third anniversary, third anniversary of the WAFs in 1943, on the march in the main street. That's in front of where the Church of England was actually. And that's a tele telegraphist uh, working at the telegraph station and the ref in the WAFs recreation room. They had a uh, fence around the WAFs, I believe. And uh, they were complaining about it was always leading in. But the blokes said it was always leading out. <laughs> <laughs> the bombing range at uh, east of Walkerway. Uh, some interesting happenings up there. Um, some of the blokes uh, think to try to get make sure they hit the hit the right target. Ended up in the scrub. <coughs> I think it was about three aircraft did that. That's a couple of the uh, central section service, the airport uh, uh, section and the store section, <coughs> fire services, and, uh, the ants being refuelled. Uh, a a Spitfire that arrived in uh, late 43, and a Bristol Bow Fighter, another one, a Bowfoot, and a Curtis Kitty Hawk. One of the Kitty Hawks arrived in early in uh, late 41. And uh, one of the instructors decided to, that he'd have a go at it. And when he took off, uh, apparently the mixture control works the opposite way to what the Anson did. And he took off with a very lean mixture. By the time he got into the uh, downwind, the uh, aircraft caught a fire. And he had to land um, just off the west side of the field. The, uh, fortunately, there's a couple of army camps there and they hauled him out of the aircraft, so he survived okay. The Spitfires in late 43, Truscott came down from uh, Onslow. A lot of aircraft flew in because of the fire. Was, uh, was fire uh, an emergency on, they thought the Japanese were going to try and invade WA. Instead, they, they were heading, heading back in the other side of Italy, uh, South China Sea. Liberator, uh, that, that crawled in. Uh, Liberator is a pretty interesting aircraft. The, uh, Henry Ford built a factory just uh, west of Ch Chicago and putting out one every 63 minutes. Uh, actually, phenomenal. The um, B 17 landed Cogerino. That was in early 42. Uh, they got lost and they didn't know, couldn't, couldn't find Jordan. But they saw the answers flying around uh, uh, Tangerina and they saw they'd land there. That was pretty well shot up apparently. Fury, uh, Swordfish, uh, they were uh, <coughs> apparently meant for Singapore and the boat got diverted to Fremantle and because it on the packages of um, aircraft, they were sent up the Pierce. And Paddy Heffern was there at the time, so this was uh, in early 42. Uh, he just saw well from the aircraft, might as well put them together. Uh, very good aircraft for surveillance out over the sea, uh, the ocean. The Americans arrived in 42, March, April. Uh, that's one of the smaller float planes. The Catalinas, and the Catalina being hauled onto one of the, the Childs or the Preston. They could haul the Catalina on the back of the, the ship to uh, do any service required. But the smaller uh, ship that they had, the Heron, could only handle the smaller aircraft. Uh, unfortunately, when when they arrived in Jordan um, in '42, they uh, uh, went up to the West End. One went to take off. But it, about a couple of weeks beforehand, the uh, railway jetty was um, destroyed about, uh, about a couple hundred yards or about a hundred yards uh, seaward of the bay of shore. And uh, I don't think they collected all the bits and pieces of the timber that they blew up. And I, one of the catalogs was taken off. He uh, must have found a bit of a log or something and ended up uh, made for the beach um, up towards uh, Bluff Point. Yeah. And by that time, from the aircraft, I had 40 odd aircraft, I think by the time I uh, got to down to um, uh, Dutch East Indies, 
they lost that many. Uh, even the ones they, they scrounged from the Dutch, re repairing all the old ones and whatever they could, they ended up with three in WA. And one ended up on the beach at Jordan. They couldn't get it off, the RAF couldn't get it off, because those days they didn't have any big cranes around the place. And the manager of um, Ducky Moor Company was just uh, about 400 yards towards the town, suggested that uh, perhaps uh, Ned Higgins might get it off. And I said, is this Mr Higgins? No, he's a farmer out the other side of you know. The CEO from the American Pac-Wing King went out there to see Ned and <coughs> said, oh, could you, could you get our aircraft off? And he said, well, who put it there? He said, one of our fellows. Oh, somebody put it there, I'll get it off. Ned said, oh, I'll be in on Thursday. When he went in, he saw it there on the, on the back on the reef and saw the, uh, uh, the American. He said, uh, what are you going to do, Mr. Higgins? He said, oh, I'll pull it apart. He said, you can't do that. You can't get the motors wet. It'll spoil them. I said, oh, well, I'll uh, build a ra ramp and raft on 44-gallon drums and put a railway tarp on it and drop me into that and get them out of the way and then I'll dismount the aircraft. So they, uh, they pulled the wings off and eventually got it on shore and they put it on train and sent it down to Perth. And down to uh, Perth, and I think it might have ended up at the um, uh, base that they had at uh, Corley Bay. Another couple of graduation parades. Uh, the Army had the job of um, looking after the base sort of going around the perimeter. But on the base, the Air Force had their own guards who maintained that. These were set up uh, more all around the field. The trainees on the march got a bit of a bag in front. And that's the last course in for SFTS. Uh, 49 course, they changed the number to 50, sent them over to South Australia. They were almost ready to do that, pick their wings with my left Jordan. And that's the uh, air, air strip was completed in 1945. Yeah, thank you.